Oh, hi and welcome. I am Lee, the Pirate Tester. This is an experiment for me as I am recording this video, but I will also be turning this into a transcript on my blog. So you may be watching me or you may be reading me. You might be listening to me through a screen reader of my text blog. Who knows? So today I would like to talk about uh, an experience I had. I would like to talk about running an AMA online. So I did this on Wednesday the 17th? 19th? Wednesday the 19th of September. And it was a group AMA on blogging. And I was the compare. I was the host. Compare always feels like a weird title for me because in the UK at least, there is a website called Compare the Market, which is also known as Compare the Meerkat, because they use little meerkats. And so I always think of that. Complete tangent, and if not in the UK, that probably won't make sense to you, but it's in my head. So I did this workshop, and I did this uh, webinar, and it was me with three others. So I had Bruce, the legend that they are. I had Chris Armstrong. And I had Louise Gibbs. And between us, we for an hour, we answered 11 questions in total pitched to us from an audience. They were able to type up their questions in advance or during the session. They would upvote ones they wanted to hear the most about from us. And we did our best to get through them. I've never ran an online event before. I've participated in one. And I've been the speaker for an AMA and I've given an online presentation, but I've never been the host. And it was very different for me. I've hosted my physical meetup that I go to. I host an event called Mids Test, which is in the West Midlands of the UK, hence Mids Test. And it would be speaking with the attendees. It would be introducing the speaker and then it would be letting them do their thing and then afterwards helping facilitate questions and then giving like a closing down where we would talk about various bits and pieces like upcoming events, so forth. But being online, it was very different. So I was acting as a host, but also one of the panelists. So I was also giving my experiences with blogging, but I was trying to make sure I was stepping back. I didn't want to ask questions and then start answering them. That's not what I was there for. I was there to help look after the other three. Um, before the session, we had plans. So we discussed how we wanted to do it, and it went out the window for the, for the better, ultimately, I feel. So a plan was one, I would pick one person to be the primary answer giver, and then if the others had minor things they wanted to add on top they would this was so we could try and get through a good flow not risk getting bogged down in answering that didn't happen whatsoever um sometimes they were very polite and none of them wanted to risk speaking over the other or we started getting to flow where they would put their hands up or make a gesture that they wanted to speak and generally i actually tried to have it where um, I asked each of them if they had something they wanted to add. And I felt like it worked better for it. It felt more natural. So if we were at a physical event and we were sat there, it would be like we were having a chat with the audience, not talking at the audience. Um, because I prefer this more human interaction as much as you can do with um, a video or some text. And yeah, it was very different. Um, the idea of talking about it afterwards came about when after the uh, webinar, the AMA, because I'm not sure what the best title for it is when describing it. The four of us then chatted afterwards, mainly for that natural high. So if you've never done any form of public speaking, it can be quite an adrenaline rush. Those who have done public speaking or um, hosting things you you may understand you may empathize with us and you can't just do that then stop and then go to bed it's just no there's too much adrenaline there's too much excitement in us 
um because it's both exciting and draining it's a very weird sensation but we were talking about it we were asking how we felt it went we all felt it went very well and we had feedback from people on twitter um which was very positive which is always lovely um i was complimented for my hosting skills which is really nice because several years ago i would never consider doing public speaking um doing videos um that are more than just a personal thing for a few friends so many many years ago i did um vlogs and put them on facebook just talking about how i was feeling and so forth but it was nothing like this um and like i ultimately as selfish as may sound i hope this leads to future experiences for me to potentially um host other events and if that could be done in a way that i get some form of reimbursement winner because who these days isn't looking for some form of side hustle i know I, i am i would like to have everyone would like more money to buy more things or to be more secure whatever it might be so thinking about what it was done is um i can i try to worry about sorry I worry about speaking too fast or if I might say things that people might not understand. I don't want to exclude people. I think my accent is overall quite neutral. Um, Certain accents within the UK, just like I imagine everywhere in the world, some accents are stronger or more noticeable. So I'm not too far from an area of England called uh, Birmingham as well as Dudley, and that has quite a strong accent. And I worry if I try to explain it, to to give an example to people, it would seem offensive to people who are from that area. Um, You can Google English accents if you don't understand them, like the Liverpudlian accent or the Scouse accent or the Cockney, so forth. Sometimes if people aren't used to those accents, There's that concern they might not be able to understand it. Um, But I hope I'm quite clear, nice and eloquent. But I don't fluff words up and try to use bigger words than I need to because I do want to be approachable and understanding and not people go, I don't know what Lee just said. I don't know what that word is and I've got time to Google it. Or he's being very pretentious, which is annoyingly a very big word that can also be pretentious i don't know so we can say i don't want to risk say big words for the sake of saying big words unless there's no other option um i think i tried to engage with the chat as well so there was the four of us speaking there was the questions but there was also a live chat feed in um so it was crowdcast we were using and People were uh, chatting in there. Sometimes they might comment on what we were saying. Generally, questions weren't in there. There was a special method for asking us questions. But I would try to make sure if people were commenting on what we were saying or the other questions that uh, questions that were being asked that we were answering. Some people would uh, chip in. So they might either talk about how it inspired them or their own experience with it. And I would try to make sure I validated that and reinforced it. Because when it gets watched back, it's only the video that gets kept, not the chat, as far as I'm aware. So anything that useful that is said in there will be lost to time. But if I can call out, if I can mention the person and what they said, it reinforces it is a community. It wasn't mysterious words out of nowhere asking us questions. It was people. These are people who wanted to ask us things. And I hope that it would lead to people either doing more blogs um i mean i haven't properly blogged in a while because i do the videos instead which i'm starting to enjoy more or it might make people lead to changes in what or how they blog um so i recently did a workshop with ad stokes he is at cricket rules on twitter i can put a link to him in the youtube text and I will make sure it's appropriately linked on my blog. 
in there he talked about um, the length and context of links you use, especially if it's on a blog or a web page. Because if it just said A.D. Stokes and the link just pointed to Twitter, it might not have any context. Um, as well, short links might look neat and tidy. They don't give context to people who might be using a screen reader. But also, if people might have mobility issues. If a link's very small, it can be hard to precisely click. Whereas if I have a long string of text that says, after going to AD's workshop, he gave me some accessibility advice, and then I have that as one massive link. Some people might go, it looks a bit bad with a big link. But if someone's used a screen reader to select it, it will explain what the link is in the context. That's very useful. If someone can find it difficult to click a link when it's an entire line long, suddenly it's lots so of hard to go, oh, I'm slightly off, or it's a very tiny link, or it's like a letter or two. No, this is going to be a whole sentence. So things like that helped have got me thinking what I will do for my blog, and I referenced that, and hopefully it might inspire other people. There were things talking about um, using alt images, and there was an example of there was a screenshot of some code used, but there was no alt image. So for someone who has visual impairment, that image won't exist and there's no context of it for describing what it does, whereas a actual snippet of code is much more valid, for example. Um, but going back to my thoughts on um, running it, if you're someone who is interested in the idea of public speaking with uh, being a host has pros and cons compared to being the presenter or panelist. So I would be answering, uh, so I would be asking the question. So I wouldn't need to be responding on the fly, which can take the pressure off. And generally there's less expectation from you. I, when I'm um, doing the meetups, I'm not the way one there giving the information about a fantastic topic. I'm there going, this is who this person is, or taking questions from an audience. So you haven't got an expectation of, do I know about X topic or X experience? That's not what I'm here for. But conversely is making sure that the questions are asked if you've got a group of people like I had with the AMA on blogging, it might be saying with, right, Chris, would you like to answer this one? Louise, would you like to answer this one? Bruce, would you like to answer this one? Um, or like if two of them put their hands at the same time, which happened a couple of times, it would be like, which one do I go for? And having a bit of a jokey tease with them. Um, but there were links that I wanted to share in the chat. I was creating a space on the club for the unanswered questions. So as I said, we got through 11 questions. There were 18, I think it was 18 remaining questions. And we don't, we didn't want to ignore them. So I copied them over to the Ministry of Testing Club, which will be linked below for YouTube actively on the blog. And we will slowly over time answer them. So I know Chris has already answered the sum. Um, and I mentioned that the rest of us will as well. And it's just little things like that, that you focus on when you're being the host. Um, with some events, you might have it where the host focuses on the speaker and someone else might focus on the chat and links and so forth. It doesn't have to be one person doing everything. So it can depend on the size of the event and the support group you've got. Um, but yeah, I mean, ultimately, I just wanted to talk about it was I really, I really, really enjoyed it. It was good fun. Um, as I said, I hope to do more things like that again in the future. And I hope if you weren't able to go once the video is available on the Ministry of Testing site, if you are interested in blogging, have a watch. Hopefully this video has let you know how I felt doing it and what was enjoyable about it. Um, if you want to get in touch, so you can comment on the blog, you can comment on the video, you can contact me on Twitter of at the Pirate Tester. Um, you can message me on LinkedIn, but I prefer Twitter um, just because with LinkedIn, I don't like getting connections from people that 
I have no connection with. When people just try to randomly add me, no message, no context, I generally ignore it. Um, so if you ever tried to connect with me, I've not replied. That's probably why. Um, if I don't know you, if I haven't got a connection, feel free to follow me. But I might not really be interested in what you're doing unless you give me a reason to want to be invested in you. Um, but we also have a Google Hangout that me and several others um, appear over the day. So for me, it'll be UK working hours. So normally between like nine and four, um, I might turn up. But we've had people from outside the UK turn up. So we've had people in Germany. I know we've had people over in um, North America. I think we might have had Central America. I can't quite recall. Um, I think we've had people from as far east as India. I don't think we've had anyone from Australasia or like Korea, China, Japan, anything like that. I think India is the furthest across we've got, but they might turn up when I'm not there and I'm completely unaware of this. So if you did want to chat with us to pick our brains, we're on there and that will be linked as well. And yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video slash blog, depending on the medium you are taking this in. And I look forward to hearing from you and interacting with you again in the future. Thank you very much. Bye.